exporters, helping to lift sentiment. The Nikkei 225 pushed past the 29,000 level, now is up by around 2.1%. The Kospi also saw a rebound today, and then the index uh, closing the day up by 7 tenths of 1%, posting 1% weekly gain, thanks to gains in Hyundai Motor. Sentiment also supported by upbeat data from the U.S. overnight. Well, Shanghai's benchmark index edging lower in the afternoon session as pharmaceuticals weighed on the sentiment. But led by rising HSBC share prices in Hong Kong, the benchmark Hang Seng index still manages to stay above the flat line. It's now only slightly above that flight line. While banking stocks in the city are seeing higher trading volumes on fresh optimism about the global recovery outlook. And one counter making its debut in Hong Kong today, well, JD Logistics, the delivery arm of JD.com. The counter jumping right from the open and opening at 46.05 Hong Kong dollars or 14 percent higher than its IPO price. That will give the Chinese delivery and warehousing firm a stock market value of some 36 billion US dollars. It's now giving up some of those gains and now trading up by only around 3.4 percent at this moment. Well, the IPO was more than 700 times subscribed by retail investors. The institutional offer was about 11 times subscribed. Shares were priced at 40.36 Hong Kong dollars apiece, raising some $3.2 billion, making this the second largest IPO in Hong Kong this year. But remember, JD Logistics is facing fierce competition in the express delivery sector as more participants edge into the market. Its Q1 earnings fell nearly 73% compared to one year ago, and it's expected to record a significant adjusted loss this year. While the listing comes at a time when Chinese authorities are tightening regulations on fintech companies and targeting tech giants with stricter anti-monopoly rules. And one expert tells us why investors piled into JD Logistics IPO and the prospects for the industry in China. Well, what's actually attracting investors is that if you look at the logistic industry in China, it's actually growing at a very fast speed. I mean, maybe 20% per year because of the digital uh, market has been growing. And JD Logistic is actually a very competitive uh, player in this market, probably only next to Shenfeng Logistic. So investors are really confident and happy about this stock, and it actually provides them with a new opportunity uh, to buy a competitor of Shenfeng, a very strong, capable competitor of Shenfeng. So, you know, you are an investor, you find more targets, you're pretty happy about that. For this industry, it will be under pressure for quite a while in the future. M meanwhile, the expansion rate will still keep on expanding. I mean, the uh, growing rates will be around 20 to 30 percent for years because China's digital industry is actually increasing. But the problem over here is that the government is putting a lot of pressure onto things like employee protection, uh, benefit to employees, social insurance, uh, monopoly, all these kinds of things cut the uh, potential profit that might be gained by these companies. So what you might see in the next few years is that the market keep on increasing because the digital market is actually expanding. The growth speed will still be there, 20%, 30%, but the profitability will be low or even negative. So it really based on how the investors are going to look at that, the market sentiment will play a lot in here. If investors believe that the profitability will return and the market is still growing, you will see a very bull market. But on the other hand, if people say, OK, they are not going to make a lot of money in the future, even if they are uh, very large companies, uh, the valuation will drop. A strong showing in Malaysia's trade data, with April exports surging 60 percent from one year ago. That's the fastest pace of growth in more than two decades. Exports rose across all categories except for liquefied natural gas and transport equipment. Imports increased 24 percent in April from one year ago outpacing the 19% rise in March. Malaysia's April trade surplus was $4.95 billion. It's been a month of volatility for cryptocurrencies, with Bitcoin tumbling some 30% from its peaks on concerns over increased regulation. And Bitcoin also fluctuated when one of its most influential backers, Elon Musk, turned against the cryptocurrency earlier this month over environmental concerns. Critics have been sounding the alarm on Bitcoin's energy use for years. According to a Cambridge University study, Bitcoin mining produces as much CO2 as New Zealand does in a year. And Bitcoin works under a system of called a proof of work it is not controlled by any single authority like a central bank, but rather a disparate network of computers. 
so-called miners then compete to solve complex math puzzles in order to make a transaction go through. The process is energy intensive and of course expensive. Well, the alternative to this is proof of stake, which is being used by cryptos such as Cardano. And proof of stake takes a different approach to security by ensuring trust in a more old-fashioned currency money and validators stake their own crypto on the network. Instead of considering the secondary cost of electricity to run a proof-of-work node, proof-of-stake chains are forced to directly deposit the monetary amount onto the network. Still, skeptics say that this is not the ultimate solution to the environmental concerns around cryptocurrencies. And we spoke earlier to Joseph Pallant, Director of Climate Innovation at Ecotrust Canada, on how to green cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin is going to stay at proof of work. There is no serious discussion about ever changing that. And so I think environmental focus there needs to be around greening the energy supply, more transparency, and then offsetting the rest, in in my opinion. Um, With Ethereum, it's been proof of work until now. They started the shift to proof of stake uh, last December. And I believe in the next year or so, we'll have fully made that transition. Yes, it's complicated, um, but the Ethereum community is brilliant, dedicated, and has been quite pulling off magic, um, as far as I can tell, in terms of what they've developed and evolved. So I believe that that will happen and that will drive emissions down, you know, 99% or more. And so I think that is a durable solution for the climate issue around Ethereum. We have other proof of stake coins natively, like the NEAR protocol, um, that's now able to use the Aurora and bridge, the rainbow bridge, um, to connect their proof of stake blockchain Um, with the currently proof of work and in the future proof of stake Ethereum and connect a lot of the programs so that they can run on both. Uh, This is, what's important for me is now that we're recognizing this is an issue, people are making strides to solve it, uh, is we need to get to a green baseline and then really keep focusing on using these innovative world-changing tools, um, not only to, to be carbon neutral in their use, but to start building the tools that will actually help humanity fight climate mm. change. Um, and so that's very important to us. All right, Glenda, that's the latest in business. Back to you. All right. Thanks very much for that, Henry. Now, Singapore is rolling out an $800 million package to support firms and workers hit by its latest tightened restrictions. For a month since May, since mid-May rather, dine-ins are not allowed and some businesses have also been forced to close. This includes indoor gyms and fitness studios. To help them, wage support of 50% will be given until mid-June under the jobs support scheme. For firms not required to close but are significantly affected, such as cinemas, they will get 30% wage support. Meantime, Rental relief of between half to one month will be given to tenants in properties. To help affected workers, those with lower to middle income and self-employed will get a one-off payout between $500 and $700 under a new grant. At the same time, the Education Ministry will extend the grace period to pay tuition fee and study loans by another four months. Unlike previous support packages, the government isn't drawing down on the country's reserves this time. Because most parts of the economy are still operating, businesses and individuals have learned to adapt. And we now also have more government support schemes like the Jobs Growth Incentive and the SG United Jobs and Skills Package, which are continuing to support new jobs and opportunities for Singaporeans. So our circumstances today are very different compared to last year. And under such a circumstance, I don't think we should be going to the president to seek permission to draw on our past reserves. Mr Wong also adds that there's no plans for now to further tighten restrictions as current measures seem to be working. He says more details on the situation will be out on Monday when the COVID-19 task force will hold a media conference. Still, he's urging the public to remain vigilant and continue to cut down on moving about. The preliminary assessment is that measures are working. We are not making any further tightening moves at this stage, but we cannot be complacent at the same time. 
right? We still have to be.